everyone and welcome to Peg's Crafting Corner on YouTube. Today I will be sharing with you my take on the popular screen card or as they're also referred to as partition cards. I will have a complete supply list with manufacturers listed in the video so you can easily find them. The first step that you will want to do is to cut a 6 by 12 inch piece of cardstock. And then you will want to use your favorite border punch and punch the top of the, the cardstock. If you don't want to do the, the punching and you just want to leave it blank, that's fine too. The next thing after that you will do is to lay it on your scoreboard and score it at 3 inches, 6 inches, and nine inches and that will give you the four panels that you will need for this card. Then you will want to create the legs for the legs for the um, screen and that is a very easy step to do. I will be using a, the wafer die which comes from SRM stickers and this makes the perfect little arched leg for these cards. You can also use a punch of your choice as well. I'm going to do this backwards on my board, my uh, embossing machine boards just so that it makes it a little easier for you to see. You can see my pads are really worn. I like to spread it out first and do the first cut by itself and then you want to fold it in the mountain valley way so that it lays on each other when you fold it. Line your die up with where you had cut previously and I like to tape my dies down so they don't move as I'm putting them through my die cutting machine. And usually I like to use blue painter's tape, but I have finally gone through my supply of that. So I'm going to just be using regular tape. Tape it inside the die, just on the edge of the die, so you catch the edge of the die and on the paper in the middle, and that way it will help you keep it straight and also this piece will be removed and you don't have to worry about the tape being stuck to your card. So we will tape that down. We will put our next plate on and I will flip them around and quickly and you may have to make a couple passes for it to completely cut through the rest of the three layers but that's okay. That only takes a minute. You really get a workout with these machines doing this, but okay, that's great. So, and we go through, and I am actually going to run it through backwards one more time here. I'll run it through again as soon as it'll come out, and that way, then I can make sure it's cut all the way through all those layers. And you might have to do it, you know, even more times if you are using a heavier card stock. I've got about a medium weight here. Okay. And let's hope this is cut and ready to go on to our next step. And it cut all the way through. You can see how it already cut all the way through. Oh, but that one layer it didn't quite catch. But that's okay because I will just take and retape that. Just lining it up right with where my die had set before. And I'll retape. 
And actually, I want to do it so that it cuts on my cutting mat, or cutting pad here. So I want to make sure I get it over on this one. And we will line it up. Just like that. Put your tape on remembering to catch the center piece that you will be cutting out and the die. You want to make sure you have the, the edge of the die done so that it holds it in place. And that way when you do all the turning it over and moving it to get it in the machine, you don't have to worry that that die is going to get off center again. You can tell my machine's been used a lot. It's got a squeaky handle on it. Okay, and this time, oop, it's not, there we go. Didn't want to let go there. And this time, it should be ready to go. There we go. And we have cut the legs for our screen just that easy. So we can set that aside then. And then the next thing you want to do, and here I'll even show you once it's open. See, isn't that pretty? Don't you just love that look? It makes it so elegant there at the bottom too. The next thing you want to do is cut eight two inch by five inch panels. And these pieces will go on here, right above there, and you can line them up. But to give them a little extra design, like I did on my first card that I showed you, and I have reversed my colors on this because I'm making a second card. I wanted to see what the two different looks like. You want to use an, your favorite embossing folder and run them through the embossing machine, and you make sure you have eight of them. So I've already got some of them done here and they will look like this. This is the Victorian fan embossing folder by Gina Marie and this is really a pretty folder. I had waited on this project because another piece of it has a fan in it and I was looking for just that right perfect element to finish it off and I saw this embossing folder and knew that I had to have it. So there's that embossing folder by Gina Marie again. It is entitled Victorian Fan. And when you run your panels through, they will look like that. Aren't those absolutely gorgeous? The next thing you want to do is take your screen and you will you have eight panels to do the front and the back. This will add a little special touch to the back of your card and make it look more finished. Before adding those panels, you want to take a piece of 12 inch twine. You want to do just, and I do just the ends of it so that it adheres to the card and not, when you don't do the, the center pieces, it allows it to give the flexibility it needs when the card is, is, um, open and closed. So you want to put just a little bit of that glue on the ends only of your twine. Get it lined up in the center of your card. That doesn't have to be perfect. And you want to let it give it just a minute or two to dry. And see my fold, my card wants to fold up here so it wants to pull my pieces up. But that's okay. Once my glue dries, it'll cooperate there. Oop, and I just got glue in the middle there. I have to use my adhesive eraser and get that off. So then, once that is dry, then you can go ahead and add your panels. And you want to use, you can use a tape runner for this. It makes the job real quick and easy and you want to just add your adhesive and line them up on your card and adhere them and that will also help hold down your twine which still wants to move on that end. 
Okay, and that's how you start building your card. We have now finished putting all of the panels on both sides of our card and this is what it will look like at this time. The next step that you want to do is cut a one and a half by one and a half square piece of cardstock and I chose to match my cardstock with my card base on this one and then you want to cut another square one and three eighths by one and three eighths if you want a layered piece. You don't necessarily have to layer it. You can use just your first square if you would like. That would be your choice. But since I'm going to put a sticker on here, I wanted a white background so you could see the sentiment. Then you want to adhere that to the second panel from your left so that it looks like that. And I am using these Happy Birthday Sentiment stickers from SRM Stickers. These are just really fun stickers to use. I love all their, their products that they have there. And I'm going to choose to use the Happy, Happy Birthday one today. So we will get this removed. They are a clear sticker, so any color that you put behind them will be able to be seen right through there so that's kind of a fun thing to do. There we go, we got the corner of it finally. And we will place that on. Oops, and we want to make sure it goes on straight. Place that on there. And you've got your birthday wishes for somebody. They also carry um, a whole lot of other stickers with different sentiments and fun things and summer and fall and seasonal. So if you don't want this to be a birthday card, just go ahead to SRM Stickers and choose one of their other fun and exciting sticker packages. The next step then you want to do is add your beautiful center piece of here on here. And I have chosen to use the Elegant Lady Stamps by, I believe it's pronounced Kanban, but I'm not sure. And this is the Elegant Lady set. You want to take and put your stamp on, and this is a good size stamp, and that's one reason why I made adjustments to the size of card, because she didn't quite fit on a smaller size card, so I enlarged it so that she would fit on there. So you want to ink up your stamp, and stamp it right on to your card base, onto your card, a separate sheet of paper. And you will have this beautiful stamped image here. And then color that with your favorite markers, favorite pencils, whatever you would like, watercolors, paints, whatever medium you choose, go ahead and, and color that. And then fussy cut it out. Just go ahead and get in there with a pair of scissors or a craft knife to get into those small areas and fussy cut that out after you're done. And here's the one that I chose for this card. So we will again use our tape runner and we will put some tape on her and stick her right on. And I make sure she's lined up at the bottom of the card. She might go up above the card a little bit that's okay that just brings a little interest to the the top of the card there or you can make it so she's peeking through the top here like I did on this one she's kind of peeking through there you see and this then will finish your card and you will have a beautiful screen or petition card Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to join me on my blog at pegscraftingcorner.blogspot.com and I will see you the next time. Happy crafting!